A common struggle for artists is staying consistent, and something that helps with this is to participate in art challenges. In this video, I'll share the steps of my process for drawing and inking a dragon using dip pens for this month's art challenge, Smogus. Smog is the name of the dragon from Lord of the Ring. However, we'll be drawing Fafnir, as this dragon won the poll over Smog in my channel's community tab. To find out more about this month's dragon challenge or for ideas on other art challenges, link to these resources are in the description below. As you can see, I've gone ahead and started the pencil drawing for Fafnir. I encourage you to draw your own dragon, though you can use a screenshot of this fellow as reference if you'd like to follow along with me for the ink application. The steps of my process for this drawing start with research on the August art challenge, research on Fafnir the dragon, gathering visual references, sketching rough thumbnails to plan the composition, and then a quick study with a fine liner pen all leading to a clean pencil drawing of the subject, our dragon Fafnir. I learned through my research that these creatures come in different types depending on whether they have wings or not and how many legs, if, if any. The olden Fafnir had a horse's head a serpent body with lizard legs. In modern gaming versions, he has since been giving wings and a more robust dinosaur appearance. As you can see from my thumbnails, I debated which version to draw and I'll tell you more about my final choice later in this video. For the pencil drawing, I used a mechanical pencil with H lead. For the ink application, I'm using a soft maroon nib, a Hunt 101 nib, India ink on bristle paper with a vellum finish. So back to our dragon. Fafnir has roots deep in North mythology. It's mainly a story of greed, curses, and epic battles. Of the versions of the sagas that stands out for me is that of when Sigurd, um, under the advice of Odin, kills Fafnir, and while cooking the dragon's heart, Sigurd burns his thumb on it. He puts his thumb in his mouth and was then able to understand the language of birds. I really like birds. Nonetheless, as much as I love to draw wings, I stayed true to the original intent of Fafnir and drew him with a lizard-like body with a snake-ish kind of tail. Not with a fierce expression, but rather a cunning charm. For the ink application, I start with the eye using the soft maroon nib and work outwards from there. My focus in terms of the pen and ink fundamentals for this piece are texture and line direction. The reason for this is because there's potential for a lot of variety in the textures with this subject. The scales that cover the body change in size as well. The line direction plays a huge part in communicating the illusion of form and volume. Typically, I prefer to do a first pass of the entire subject to establish the values from lightest to black before I get into the details. Here though, you can see that using the smaller nib, I've already rendered a lot of details. I've even now addressed areas of stronger shadows as I make my way down the drawing. Maybe a little too much too soon. Here moving from the head to the neck of the dragon is a perfect example of how line direction plays a major role in communicating what's going on with the shapes. Here with the head tilted back and the throat is closer to the viewer. This soft maroon nib has a stiff point for precision, yet releases ink with the slightest bit of pressure and gives thicker weight to the lines where contrast is needed. The thicker lines create a shadow effect and make it more obvious that the scales overlap each other. I'm using a light outline to define the elements of the drawing that are now in the forefront such as the upper leg and large boulder for now, to remind me not to put too much detail there. The underbelly on the dragon will be in a stronger area of shadow, and I'll emphasize this by adding more marks there, parallel lines that are very close together, following the form of the scales. After five or six strokes, I swirl the pen in water, wipe it clean, then reload it with ink dipping just below the eyelet. I repeat this process for the entire ink application to keep the nib in pristine working order. Here I'm drawing guidelines for the gradation of values to ensure the body has a cohesive form. 
One of the traps I fall into sometimes is to get hyper focused on shading the individual shapes, but that has the risk of sending the viewer in a chaos of detail. It's important to invite the gaze to a focal point. So I render each scale individually while being mindful that the clusters create an entire dragon. You'll have noticed that I switched to my Hunt 101 nib as now I'm getting into larger elements of the dragon, I will want to cover more surface with marks. I'm adding light pressure on the nib to create thicker lines and tapering the lines as they come close together at the tip of each feathery scale. I read somewhere that some prehistoric creatures had feathers instead of scales and I really like that idea for our Fafnir. Now for the large scales of the underbelly, the line direction changes. I could use a brush for this section to cover more surface. The downside of using a brush is that it can lead to solid black too soon. I prefer a pen for building the texture gradually, despite being more time consuming. I'm aiming for a halo effect in the areas of higher contrast. It's basically a subtle white line around the darker values a technique often used by comic artists. For the backside of the dragon, I use short curved dashes, applying pressure on the nib where the feathers are raised and catch shadow. For the tail section, I render similar textures, line weights and tones to maintain that continuous form of the whole subject making my way to the boulder using short to long hatch marks to indicate a rock texture. I think of the boulder as a mass of smaller rocks and shade those shapes accordingly. I'm extra mindful for this section of the drawing to keep the details more subtle and the tones more uniform as to not detract from the main subject. Now with the wispy bubble cloud in that background, Again, with a very subtle line treatment to suggest that the cloud is further away and is there mostly as an element that anchors the overall composition. Next, I take a photo of the drawing and I leave it overnight. The next day, with a fresh eye, I review the areas that benefit from smoother transitions of grays. For example, this section of the tail at the forefront and the abrupt shading around the talons or the claws. As well, I find that the kink in the tail could be less angular. And now our drawing of Fafnir the Dragon for this month's art challenge is complete. I hope that you're inspired to participate in art challenges. There's Inktober coming up very soon. And let me know in the comments if you intend to participate this year. For more tips, be sure to watch this video and thanks again for being here and I'll see you in the next one.